Following in the footsteps of Ryu back in Smash 4, Ultimate oversaw the addition of three more characters in the greater fighting game community, Ken, Terry, and Kasuya, and though each of them hail from a different franchise, Street Fighter, Fatal Fury, and Tekken respectively, they're more or less put together for their shared attributes and mechanics. Kasuya's ridiculously overtuned and overloaded moveset obviously established him as the most popular and successful of the four, but not too far behind him is Mr. Bogart, released at the tail end of Fighters Pass 1 and is achieving comparable results across all levels of play. Terry may not have been on many of your radars for my Why Everyone Plays series, especially when I still have yet to go over the likes of Mario and Diddy Kong, but I like to wager, based on aggregate data that was released earlier last year and from observations in the competitive scene, that you're just as likely to run into a Terry player as you are a Snake, Wolf, Ness, etc. It's generally agreed upon that, in regards to tournament viability, he's the most balanced of the four while still being notorious for having very high upset potential in the form of his many attributes, making him just as, if not more popular, in high and mid-level play where mistakes and vulnerabilities in players are more prominent. So for today's episode of Why Everyone Plays, we'll be discussing Terry Bogart. FGC characters in Smash are known for three key elements, first and chief of all being their usage of command inputs. By quickly tapping the control stick in a specific motion, then pressing the A button, you can perform measurably stronger or upgraded variants of your specials, with some attacks only being accessible via command inputs. Mastery over set techniques greatly enhances the threat capacity of these fighters, to the point where an FGC character that makes no use of inputs is less than half as strong as one that does. The second attribute is their auto turnaround property, emulating their penchant for doing so in their games of origin. This makes playing around them such as trying to attack them from behind less effective than against other opponents, as they automatically will face you even if you cross them up. The final attribute is their extreme close quarters pressure on the ground, making them bar none the strongest fighters in the entire cast in those scenarios. Battling an FGC character necessitates most if not all of your combat taking place in the air or at a far distance, as you're practically guaranteed to lose at point blank range on solid footing. It's through these attributes that grant these characters some of the deadliest punish games in the history of Smash, dealing catastrophic damage or outright ending your stock at ludicrously early percents if you so much as give them an opening. But it's that third attribute in particular that distinguishes Terry from the rest of his peers. Against Ryu, Ken, and Kasuya, in spite of the latter's bullshit invincibility frames, understanding the threat bubble and means of attack is fairly digestible, even with deceptively large hitboxes on many of their moves. Adding on to that, their physics in terms of movement both on the ground and in the air are variably subpar, either having poor verticality, maneuverability, or both. Because of this, the aforementioned three would prefer their opponents to do the approaching rather than the onus of approaching falling on them. So while they have enough firepower in their punches and kicks to blow you to kingdom come, the caveat is if they can get their hands on you, and that's easier said than done. Terry does share the same weaknesses, notably in terms of his mediocre ground and airspeed, and like them, he would very much appreciate it if his opponents approached him instead of the inverse, but he does have the luxury of being more proactive. The biggest difference between Terry and the others that lends credence to his popularity is the copious amount of burst options in his repertoire. Typically, burst options are not a viable replacement for good innate mobility, but they can add an element of unpredictability since an otherwise slow character can, however brief, move at a very fast speed. Steve is a noteworthy example of this. One of the slowest characters, if not the slowest in the game, with some of the worst air and ground speeds, but his minecart and villain Elytra give him fantastic immediate repositioning. Or on the opposite end of the spectrum, Sonic, who has lightning fast mobility and burst movement options. Most characters have one or two at most. Terry has not one, not two, not three, but four different burst options, technically five if you go hard enough, each with their own range of movement and applications, and all of them are as deadly as the next. First one being Burn Knuckle, a straight lunge with huge damage, a long-lasting hitbox, and strong knockback even on the late hit. It's easily his best option for catching landings or for edge guarding anyone trying to recover horizontally, and it's the hardest hitting burst option overall, not counting one of the other ones that exceed Burn Knuckle, but only on the ground. Second option is Power Dunk, a rising diagonal jump followed by a falling diagonal cross that deals huge damage and can be difficult to chase on account of being the most unorthodox in lateral movement. Third option is Crack Shoot, a spinning heel kick that travels in an arc over a set distance. Though it's the weakest in terms of knockback, it shares the same property of doing very high damage and, in addition, has the highest shield pressure. But its main distinction is how fast and safe it is, being far more difficult to react against especially given that it can very easily cross some shields. Final burst option is the infamous Buster Wolf, a super special move that can only be used on the ground but has ridiculously far travel distance and speed. Should the move connect, it's one of the strongest and highest damaging single blows in the entire game, rivaling some of the most powerful forward smashes. These movement options afford Terry greater agency in getting close to his opponent where he can then exert his superior close quarters pressure. Alternatively, he can use those same options to mix up his disadvantage and recovery in more varied ways. Where the others may struggle against mid-range fighters like Swordies or Zoners, Terry is a bit more comfortable at. As a result, he has a less polarizing matchup spread versus the rest of the cast. 
More importantly, a major benefit that comes from this is that it gives them more ways of breaking through defensive play and more effectively as well. Against anyone who likes to spam landing aerials such as Cloud, Ike, Shulk, Link, and whatnot, Crackshoot's fast speed and great air coverage makes it a potent zone-breaking anti-air tool, forcing them to be more wary of the fact that Terry could be standing across the stage yet still damage them. Power Dunk is an excellent way to get past anyone with far-reaching horizontal pressure like Samus, as he can jump over charge shot then come straight back down. On the subject of Power Dunk, if you manage to land the aerial variant on a person's shield, it's actually positive in that Terry's opponent incurs more frames of shield stun than Terry does from landing, letting him quickly transition to a fast move like Jab to surprise anyone who tries to add a shield him thinking they can. One of the biggest factors that can prevent a character from finding greater popularity is if they suffer from a lack of agency, specifically against a certain archetype. Make no mistake, Terry has tough matchups, but even versus them, it never feels like he has no chance against them. He does have ways to get in, whereas the other FGC characters can feel completely smothered out in certain instances. Basically, Terry is the least likely to get screwed by an unlucky bracket path. Oftentimes, you see players like Riddle springing in Terry to give him better options to select against more tricky matchups, most famous being when he switched to Terry against Sonics during Collision 2023 to pull off a reverse 3-0. Sometimes, Terry just feels more comfortable to use. On the subject of comfortability, the next aspect that makes Terry so popular is that of the four FGC characters, he's the one who plays the most like a regular Smash character, meaning he's more intuitive. Ryu, Ken, and Kasuya are very strong contenders, but they can feel rather jarring to get into on account of their more divergent playstyles and qualities. Kasuya is a devastating opponent for anyone to fight, but stuff like having to rely on his crouch dash to move fast on the ground, or his rain 7 jump squad and weird double jump, not to mention having more than triple the number of moves that other fighters have, can make him difficult to get the hang of, even if the payoff is more than worth. It. Ryu and Ken aren't as overloaded, but Ryu's more defensive, force approaches game plan, and Ken's rushdown combo-centric nature takes some getting used to. There's also the whole thing with their tilts having light and heavy, close and far versions. All three of them also have a wide variety of special inputs that give them additional attacks beyond their normal and special moves, which give them a steeper learning curve. Some combos work at this percent while others work at that percent and you have to remember all those things in addition to quickly getting your inputs in. Terry on the other hand is the closest an FGC character can get to being a Smash character if that makes sense. He still greatly relies on inputs to get the most out of him but they're very straightforward in that they almost always consist of 1-2 combos, chief among them being his bread and butter jab jab power dunk. A solid combo that can work at all percents, dealing good damage at low percent and being a serviceable kill option especially near the ledge. Others include down tilt burn knuckle, forward tilt crack shoot, jab jab rising tackle, up air rising tackle, nair burn knuckle. They're pretty much all 1-2 combos with generous percent ranges in which they can work, creating a simple yet effective flowchart that anyone can pick up in a reasonable amount of time. There's also the fact that unlike Ryu and Ken who don't really have the best grab game, Terry actually has one, although it's nothing to write home about. Down throw low percents can lead into an up air rising tackle or nair burn knuckle for a quick 30-40% to to start the stock, while up throw can also lead into up air rising tackle. To my knowledge, Ryu and Ken can both use their down to lead into stuff in the early percents, but you don't see them grabbing nearly as often since their grab ranges are pretty short and if they're close enough to grab the maze all down tilt and pressure shield, while Terry can and often does incorporate grabs into his early percent game plan, making him play more like a smash character. Terry's a lot more forgiving, both due in part to his burst options, but also his general attack range. Just now I said that you can use a lot of his combos from 0 all the way to kill percent. I'm not sure if it's just anecdotal, but I find that Terry's combos land more consistently than the other FGC characters, whose targets can fall out of stuff if they're even the slightest bit out of range or something else. It's common knowledge that you can SDI out of his jab 1-2 to escape stuff like Power Dunk and Buster Wolf, but overall, the main goal of Terry is to simply land the first blow against his opponent. His forward tilt is huge and disjoint and practically a sword forward tilt in range. His down tilt forward air and most of his attacks have big hitboxes, so you don't have to be nearly as precise on him compared to other short range fighters. I mean, for crying out loud, have you seen his power geyser? That thing has to be one of the largest non-projectile attacks in the entire game. Plus, many of them have long lasting hitboxes too. Of course, a lot of that has to do with the fact that Terry's conversions end in his burst options, letting him chase after opponents that get knocked away a fair bit. But that contributes to people wanting to keep playing him after they pick him up. Few characters have even one combo or conversion that works from 0 all the way to kill percent. Terry has tons. 4 till Buster Wolf works pretty much until like 90, but Buster Wolf can kill way earlier than that. Jab Jab Power Dunk always works, Jab Jab Rising Tackle always works, Down Tilt Burn Dunk always works. I think Up Tilt Power Geyser always works, but don't quote me on that. One last thing about him feeling more like a Smash character is that he can play the Stray Hit game too. On occasion you see Kasuya throwing out a Raw Dragon Uppercut or Ken doing a Yolo Shoryuken to catch a jump, but FGC characters usually have to rely on their set of tools like Down Tilt or Electric to finish off your stock. Terry prefers to go this path too, but he can win the Stray Hit game. Power Dunk and Burn Knuckle are good surprise options when you consider how far the strong versions can travel. Sometimes Terry players just throw out a raw Buster Wolf or Power Geyser and hope you get caught with your shield down. 
His dash attack is also fast, strong, and not that punishable. So if push comes to shove, he could just throw out moves and hope you get hit by them and die, instead of exclusively fishing for combo setups. And against Terry, you very much have to respect those YOLO moves because holy shit do they hit like a truck. Terry is extremely strong in terms of numbers. He has one of the highest risk-reward ratios in the entire game, specifically in regards to his difficulty and execution. For all the hate Kasuya gets, in his defense, executing a perfect zero to death string is a lot harder than people give it credit for, as evident by the fact that only top-level players can consistently pull it off, and even then, they sometimes can't. Terry's 1-2 combos produce extraordinary damage and kill power for being comparatively a lot more simple. Literally, all he needs to do is land a jab, down tilt, or forward tilt against you, and you can either take 50 or explode just like that. This is one instance, and in no way am I saying this covers all of Terry's scenarios, but I still remember over 3 years ago during the Cosmic Kerfuffle when Riddles straight up robbed Spargo game 5. Down tilt, jab, jab, Buster Wolf kills Spargo at 47%. How many other characters can do that and with a simple button input combo? It's like the Roy thing, you can have advanced ways to kill, but having a simple confirm like jab back gear or in Terry's case jab jab power dunk or Buster Wolf that can kill super early is a very big asset to have on a character. Countless times we hear about fighters like Sheik, England, Pikachu, what have you struggle to close out stocks because they don't have an easy kill option on stage. Meanwhile, Terry has a plethora of ways to f*** you up at criminally low percents. This may be a hot take, but I think Terry's even more egregious of a stock thief than Kasuya. Stuff like down tilt, up tilt power guys that can kill Bowser off the top at 60. Burn Knuckle off stage can kill as early as 62. Also, I forget exactly when it happened, but I recall one time where Riddle skill base mage at like 40 with up throw, up air, rising tackle. This guy does so much damage and has so much base knockback in his kit, especially with his go button. That reminds me, unlike most other comeback mechanics where you can only use it once, such as KO Punch, Waft, Rage Drive, or comeback mechanics that are temporary, like Arsene and One Wing, Terry can spam go moves as much as he wants, ironically making it more of a win more mechanic. Terry can abuse Buster Wolf and Power Geyser to his heart's content, permanently benefiting from rage thanks to being above 100% whenever those are accessible. He also has a few other privileges that are worth mentioning. Though Ryu and Ken are legendary for their shield pressure, Terry's not half bad in this department either. When special cancelling is normal, he gets to act about 5 to 10 frames faster than you can, sometimes even more, making his grounded moves almost unpunishable on shield since he'll get smacked right in the face by a special who drops shield too quickly or don't have a super fast status shield option. So while other fighters want to avoid being careless with their moves on shield, Terry kind of gets rewarded for mashing on your shield. Additionally, he has a special spot dodge cancel move making it impossible to punish his spot dodge because he gets a full body intangibility attack, almost like an electric wind god fist without the electric. The combination of having a lot of stuff and being able to access that stuff rather easily while having some semblance of conventionality essentially grants him the benefits of being both an FGC character and a smash character. To be fair, he's still really easy to juggle and edge guard just like the others, and it is still easy to wall him out once you understand the nuances of his threat bubble, but even so, he still has enough in terms of power, speed, range, and whatnot to where simply knowing what he can do doesn't completely neutralize the danger of it the way it does for matchup checkers. And, with Smash lately progressing more towards punish games, Terry's immaculate punish game will only continue to advance his popularity in my opinion. So, that wraps up today's video. Let me know your thoughts on Terry in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with my points. Aside from that, if you enjoyed the video, I encourage you to leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at VarsFam, join my Discord server, and check out my other Everyone Plays videos if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.